Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon, and I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies at Charles Darwin University. Welcome to Outrider 36, Reboot Your Thesis. Now, sadly, my computer really loved doing an autocorrect on the title of this particular Outrider, so it became Rebooty your thesis has a whole different meaning. But can I say this is the time of the year where we have the New Year's resolutions, where we make a decision that our life is going to be different. But of course, New Year's resolutions don't work because we have a vibe, we have an idea, we hope for the best, but our decision is not backed up by a change in our behaviour. So therefore, the resolutions dissipate very close each year in January. So wherever you are in your candidature, if you realise that you're going to need to reboot your thesis, a lot is going wrong and the time has come for you to make a decision and to activate different behaviour, then what we're going to talk about in the Outrider this week is how to reboot your thesis, how to turn your candidature off and on again and create improvement. Every single day, you can make a decision to configure your PhD differently. You can make a decision today to enhance and improve your research life. But the reason we all need to continually reboot and refresh in our lives and reflect on them is because a PhD can drift. And if a PhD program can drift, really appalling things happen to your personal and professional life. So let me start with a fact. And the fact is, the longer you are enrolled in a PhD, the less likely you are to finish. So I know students always sort of go, Tara, why are you so focused on us finishing? Can't you just leave us alone to do research and have a great time? Look, I want you to have a great time. I want you to have a great research career. But the trouble is, I know the actual fact and the research about your research. And that is, the longer you are enrolled, the less likely you are to finish. And there are many reasons for that. And many are simply attached to the fact that you can't focus or concentrate on the same thing for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or twelve years. And of course, during a length of time, during a, during a period of our lives, things happen. Bad things happen. People die. People get sick. Relationships break up or you simply get really bored. But also, it can be very, very easy to sort of drift away from your thesis. So you decide to have a day off. Okay, you decide to have a day off. And that becomes a week, and that becomes a month, and suddenly you've been on a leave of absence for a year, and you're wondering what's going on. So what we're going to do today is get inside this difficult untenable space. We're going to try to move you into a committed, focused, exciting space to complete your research. And to do so, I'm going to move you through five stages. So what I'm intending to do is move you from sort of a bit of a train wreck of a PhD to a smooth super train of a PhD. So for those of you that are doing fine in your PhD, that's brilliant. I'm so thrilled for you, but there may be a couple of suggestions in the Outrider this week that helps you enhance and improve and yes, speed up your already pretty successful candidature. But for those of you, hi, that are in a world of pain, you're in the middle of a really, really problematic situation. You hate yourself, you hate your supervisor, you hate the research, you hate the thesis. Then this outrider is going to provide you with a concrete methodology to move you outside of that pain. Now, what I'd advise is that we all move through the five stages of this outrider in order. OK, complete them in the order that I present. Now, for those of you doing well, there may be just a tip or a trick or a strategy that you pick up that enhances your life. That's great. But for those of you in a really difficult position, let's go through the methodology to get you out of this situation. 
So the best way to use this outrider to make change in your life is to listen to the first stage, pause the video, get a pen and a paper and write through the exercise. And then you reconnect with the video, you listen to the next stage, you pause and you go again. So if you are in a mess, if you are seriously stuck, then let's reboot this thesis and this candidature together. Stage one, list your motivations. Now, as most of you know, right from the start, when I'm uh, supervising a student, I get my students to write down 10 motivations why they are completing this thesis. And I don't let them start the candidature until we have those 10 motivations. Now, some of those motiv motivations may be pretty banal, some may be inspiring, but you need 10 motivations. You need a lot more than that, but 10 is a good start. Because bad things are going to happen to you during this candidature, relationships are going to end, people are going to get sick, people are going to die. And unless you know why you're doing a thesis, then you're just going to drift. You're just going to drift. So to reboot your thesis, I need you to reconsider your motivations and your commitment to this thesis. So I need you to get a piece of paper out right now and list the 10 reasons that you're doing this PhD. Now they may be, and to be frank, they probably will be radically different from the motivations that started you on this journey in the first place. But the warning light for me, and it should be a warning light for you, is if a student is battling to come up with any motivations about why they're doing a PhD. Motivation is everything. Because if you've lost your motivation, your reason for doing a PhD, then why the hell would you be putting yourself through this hell? If you don't know why you're putting yourself through this, then don't put yourself through this. Make a decision to leave the program. Don't drift. Don't drift. You will lose your life if you drift. But also, if you're having some difficulty thinking through the motivations, don't give up. Go for a walk, have a think, and start to really remember why you started and why you are continuing and what you want to get out of this situation. So find an answer to the question, why are you doing this? And then write down those motivations. Right, that's stage one, motivation. Let's move to stage two, do a stock take of your emotions. The second stage is probably the hardest one. Before you think about the scholarly state of your thesis, we need to think about you, your emotional life, your well-being. Well-being is not a word that I use very often, but we really need to do a stock take of your emotional state at this point. You need to write down what you are feeling right now. And, you know, explain it to me. Pretend I'm asking you how you're feeling. Then answer that question for me. Why are you in this situation? What's caused such a disruption to your candidature and to your research life? So answer those questions for me. What's gone wrong? Why are you in this situation? Now, this is the hard bit. How do you feel? about this situation. Be honest with yourself. The chances are you're pretty disappointed in yourself. You may indeed be pretty disgusted at yourself. Now what I need you to do is sit in that emotion. Feel that emotion. No excuses, no deflection. This is your emotional life. Claim it. Jump into that emotion and write down, acknowledge those emotions. Now, from this, I need to move you from this emotional state to answer a couple of really significant questions. How did you get into this emotional state? How has this all happened? And I need you to be honest when answering those questions. 
we're going to return to this particular strategy at the end of the outrider. But are you looking in the mirror? Are you blaming yourself for the state of your life and the decisions that you've made? Or are you blaming absolutely everybody else? So be honest with yourself. Where are you placing that blame? Now, Donald Altman, in his book, 101 Mindful Ways to Build Resilience, stated that, quote, while you cannot control the cards you are dealt in life, you can decide how best to play this hand in the next minute, end of quote. Very powerful statement that, a short-term strategy to create momentum. OK, so we've handled your motivation. We've understood your emotional state. Right, let's now go to stage three to build momentum for you away from this emotional state and problem. Stage three, stock take your thesis right now. Okay, we've talked about emotions. We're now going to park that. I need you to park the emotional well-being conversations right now. And I want you to write down dispassionately now the current state of your thesis. I want you to list what you have done, what you have achieved. So the literature that you have reviewed, the ethics, the methods, the methodologies, the epistemologies, the ontologies, the data collection, the data analysis, how much you have written the drafting on that writing, the chapters that have been started, the chapters that have been finished, the words written, what's been done. Okay, now no pressure, no judgment when you're doing this inventory, emotion out. Right, now the second thing I want you to do after you've configured the inventory of what you've done is then construct a list of what is yet to do. Now, this might be a long list. Don't worry about it. What is left to do? Be honest. Don't cheat it because you're only cheating yourself. So list honestly what is left to do. No judgment. Really well done. Let's move to stage four. Attach a length of time to the tasks that are yet to be completed. Now, there's a whole list of tasks, perhaps a lot of them, from your previous stage that are yet to be completed. Now, I want you to put a predictive time to each of those tasks. And look, it may be days, but what I need you to do is try and get the tasks into bite-sized chunks that can be assessed in hours. So attach a time to the task to complete it. And therefore, we move to the final stage, stage five. What will you do tomorrow? What I now need you to do is pick a task from that list to plan to complete it tomorrow. What I need you to do is look at the tasks, look at the time, and pick something easy. Pick something straightforward. This is the low-hanging fruit task, okay? And I need you to complete it tomorrow. I need you to wake up in the morning. I need you to start. I need you to complete the task, finish it. And I need you to feel really excited by finishing that task. What you're doing is you're teaching yourself again what success looks like what success feels like. Now, some tasks may take 10 hours. Don't start with those tasks. Look for the tasks that take one, two, or three hours and celebrate the completion of every single achievement. You're not judging yourself here. All we're doing is thinking small. Here is a task to complete. I start it and I finish that task. You're not thinking big picture here at all. You're not thinking completion of the PhD here at all. You're thinking, what task will I start and finish tomorrow? You wake up and you finish that task. And then, of course, the next day, you set a task for the following day and you keep going and you keep going to create the momentum. So what we're doing here is we're getting you back in the groove. This is what a completed task looks like 
This is what a completed task feels like. And you own that, and you own that success. And you complete those tasks one at a time until the list is concluded. So they are the five stages moving you from disconnection, worry, disgust, despair, to falling back in love with your research or indeed respecting it enough so at least you finish it. The final point that I want to make in this Outrider is the importance of making a choice. The importance of making a decision. The importance of taking responsibility for your actions. It is your PhD. You made a decision to enrol. You made a decision to continue. You have made a decision to be a PhD student. Now, in Outrider 34, I cited a truly dreadful book, Now or Never, by Preston Smiles and Alexi Panthos. Now, dreadful book, but the dreadful book contains a fantastically important phrase. And that phrase is radical responsibility. I know, as Dean, if a PhD student is going to make it by the language that they use to describe themselves and their work. The moment that I hear a student blame supervisors, administrators, the university, late capitalism, deans like me, for example, I get a lot of blame, bless, because obviously I'm responsible for you not completing your research. When I hear this sort of language, then I know a student won't finish. And they certainly won't finish unless they make a different series of decisions and re-language those decisions. A PhD is bogged down almost permanently by excuses. To reboot your thesis, you have to decide. You have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. And what are you choosing? Are you deciding to be a thoughtful, thinking, responsible scholar? Are you making a decision to own your decisions, own your time, and own your completions? If you make those decisions, you have just assumed radical responsibility for your life. It's really easy to blame others, real easy, because it lets you off the hook. It's harder, it's more productive to look in the mirror and claim radical responsibility for your life. It is important for your professional life. It's also important for your personal life. All of us make bad choices. I have made tens of thousands of bad choices in my life. If you live, you make a bad choice. The skill comes, colleagues, in recognising that bad decision, that bad choice, as quickly as you can, so you can make a different choice you can make a different decision. If you keep going as you are, stalled, cross, making excuses, nothing will change. If you think differently, you'll create a different consciousness and therefore also create different outcomes. I wanna finish with Sven Hansen's book, Inside Out. It's a great book. And he states that, quote, fear walks hand in hand with change, end of quote. He argues we all need three C's, courage, creativity, and connection. This week, let's activate, let's practice courage, creativity, and connection. I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.